Naomi, the reaction here as we start to see companies back off, is it the only way they can play it? We're still yet to hear from certain companies such as well, Jamie Dimon's JP Morgan. Yes, there are some companies who haven't yet taken a public stand. Um, and I think the actions to, um, you know, no longer attend a conference are notable, um, but they are, you know, much easier to do than to say, sever relationships with investors who are based in the country. And so that was a quick sort of easy step to take, whether there will be more actions by some of these tech companies or more actions by tech companies who have yet to take a public stand is, is an open question. Bob, we've got to remind ourselves that Uber took a decent chunk of change from the public investment fund that is run by Saudi Arabia, PIF, just a few years ago. And indeed, PIF has been really very active in other tech investments, particularly linked to the Vision Fund. What do you think it means for the tech ecosystem? Well, look, I think it raises some serious questions. I mean, obviously, there was no awareness of, of, of these level of issues with Saudi Arabia back then. They've had human rights concerns, but this has really brought those issues to the fore. And I think it's going to, you know, raise some the kinds of head scratching and, and really uh, moral dilemmas that these companies are going to have to deal with. Um, and look, we're in an environment right now where the tech industry is so poorly looked upon by so many parts, not even you know of the world and, and within the US you know I think it's a critical moment for them to make some bigger steps you know I agree this was e like it, you know we're not gonna go to your conference now okay fine that that's great and that's an important step but it's more of a symbolic step the question is can they move beyond the symbolism and make really substantive changes and that's gonna be a much harder question to answer and of course it's gonna take much longer to determine because the impact could be uh, extremely large longer term but I think you're going to see a lot of questions being raised. You're going to see a lot of discussions being had behind closed doors in terms of what should we do, what can we do. I, I, but I think in general, the tech industry needs to make these kind of big moves, uh, particularly in the overall environment we're in politically as well as economically, as well as regulatory and everything else. Talking of the overall political situation, Naomi, how has Trump reacted? Because as we mentioned earlier, it wasn't long ago that the prince was touring the United States. And in fact, it was just last week the prince was saying how much he loved working with President Trump. Yeah, the Trump administration has been reluctant to take some of the stronger actions that some lawmakers on the Hill have asked for, whether that be sanctions or blocking arms sales to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Trump administration has, in fact, formed a closer relationship with Saudi Arabia as it seeks to protect U.S. interests um, in Yemen and beyond. And so I think that gives tech companies a kind of um, cover. As long as lawmakers are focused on their, uh, their attention on trying to convince Trump uh, to go one way or another, uh, they're not focused on asking tech companies to, to ask, you know, to take bigger steps. Mm. Uh, where What might happen, though, is we might see pressure internally from some of these tech companies to take action. Uh, increasingly, tech companies are having to grapple with employees who are, you know, signing petitions and pressuring their leadership to take political stance, whether, you know, it's at Microsoft and their employees are trying to pressure them to sever a relationship with ICE, the immigration enforcement, uh, or whether it's Google recently pulling out of uh, a potential deal at the Pentagon, yeah. uh, in part in response because employees, you know, raise questions about uh, whether Google should be working with the military. And so I think, you know, whether those companies um, follow that, kind of take those kinds of actions after those kinds of questions are being raised, um, you know, is really something to be looking forward to. Yeah, Bob, it's interesting that, of course, one of the key companies that's desperately trying to reinflate its brand and perception from the rest of the world as to how it treats its employees and indeed its staff and those outside the business is Uber. And it's notable that Tarek Oswashahi, the CEO of Uber, has come out saying, you know, the reasoning behind why he's not going to be attending the business, the, the event, saying he's very troubled by the reports to date from about Jamal Khashoggi. We are following the situation closely and unless a substantially different set of facts emerges, I won't be attending the FII conference in Riyadh. Who do you think that more CEOs from technology will all have to take the steps that Dara Khosrowshahi has? 
You know, I, I think they are. You know, and, and if you look at what Richard Branson said, he took it even further, right? He said, this raises serious questions about future investments. You know, we're talking of billions of dollars that, you know, Virgin was going to be deploying mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. And he raised the question of, you know, all Western companies are going to have to think about how they interact with. That was a particularly strong statement. Now, we'll see if other companies are as courageous as that. Uh, but I do think it's important. And again, it's frankly a good opportunity for Uber to try and present a more positive image of the type of steps that it's taking. So I think it was a great statement for him to make, and I think we'll be interesting to see if he goes a little further as we've seen with the statements from, uh, from Richard Branson.